Hello and welcome to this Drug Education for Teachers introductory session. Today, my colleague Dave and I are going to share with you some approaches that we know work well for delivering effective age-appropriate drug education for primary school age children. And to begin, the Drug Education Network acknowledges the strength, resilience and capacity of the Tasmanian Aboriginal people and their deep and lasting cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship as ongoing custodians of the land and waters of Lutruwita. We recognise that our organisation operates on the land of the traditional custodians and we pay our respect to elders past and present. Den is proud to work with the Tasmanian Aboriginal community to prevent the harms caused by alcohol, tobacco and other drugs. For those of you who haven't heard of the Drug Education Network, or DEN as we are also called, We've been around for over 30 years and our core business is to deliver training, information and develop resources aimed at preventing and reducing harm from drug use for people throughout Tasmania. Our approach is based on the idea that we do not condone or condemn drug use, but we acknowledge drug use exists. We aim to meet people where they are at in order to support people to make well-informed decisions around substances. So in today's session, we're going to provide an overview of the principles of drug education, a clear understanding of why drug education is important for this age group, and we'll also provide some examples and lesson ideas that you can print out and use in the classroom. At this point, we'd like you to imagine a continuum that represents your level of confidence and knowledge in teaching drug education. Think about your current level of knowledge and experience. If you were to position yourself on a scale between 1 and 10, where one is no knowledge and experience of teaching drug education and 10 is experienced and confident, where would you be right now? Have a think about what you might need to move forwards to a more confident, higher score. We hope that by the end of this session, you'll have moved along this continuum towards where you want to be. And please remember that our team at DEN are here to assist you if you still have questions after the session or if you want to check in on your lesson planning. We are available and ready to help. We'll provide our contact details at the end of the session. So you may be wondering what drug education in primary school settings looks like. And you may also have questions about the value or effectiveness of primary school drug education. You may be thinking, I'm not a drug expert, so I won't be able to do this. So let's examine why should we start drug education in primary schools? There are a few good reasons. The evidence is clear that children are exposed to ideas and social norms that reinforce substance use from an early age. An Australian study of 164 children aged 5 to 12 years found that 76% were able to correctly match at least one sport with its relevant sponsor. This is not surprising given an estimated cumulative audience of 26.9 million Australian children and adolescents watching Australia's major televised sporting codes, AFL, cricket and NRL. And that they are exposed to 51 million instances of alcohol advertising, with nearly half of these broadcast during daytime programming between 6am and 8.30pm. It is also evidenced that brand recognition for a range of alcohol products influences children's acceptance of consumption of alcohol as a normal behaviour. If we were in a workshop together, I'd ask you what comes to mind when you hear the word drug. Often when I ask this question, the top three drugs people name are ice, cannabis and alcohol. So often people think mainly about the illegal drugs and their effect on health. This is an important area to think about, but the legal drugs, including alcohol and tobacco, and prescription medications, when they're not used safely, cause many health problems, accidents and injuries. As this slide shows, tobacco and alcohol cause significantly more drug-related deaths than illicit drugs. And we also know that accidental overdose or misuse of prescription medications is increasing substantially. Good drug education assists children to start learning about what can help their health and what can cause harm. Safe use of medicines, for example, knowing that medicine should only be taken following a doctor or pharmacist's directions. And in upper primary school, children can begin to learn and develop critical thinking skills about smoking as well as the effect of energy drinks on their health. It's also important at this point to acknowledge that the potential for drug-related harm to affect young people is influenced by a range of factors that occur in many different domains of their lives, including the community, family and school. As this slide shows, there are a number of risk factors that contribute to harmful substance use. 
schools can and do make a difference, not only through their programs, but also through the opportunities for learning and support that they bring to their students. In any consideration of school drug education, it needs to be kept in mind that schools can contribute to preventing or reducing students' drug use without being expected to be held accountable for that student's actions. So now we are going to share an overview of the principles of drug education. So the purpose of these principles is to provide a framework to support effective drug education practice. They are intended to guide school executive, teachers and staff, as well as families, community agencies and other stakeholders in making decisions related to drug education practice within school communities. The principles draw on drug prevention research of effective drug education programs. This body of research has focused on how programs can be delivered in order to maximise their impact on students' behaviour in relation to drug issues. The principles also draw on more recent research literature on youth development and resilience in determining the health of young people. This research stems from a range of disciplines that are now beginning to overlap, including epidemiology, social capital, and life trajectory studies. It is now clear that young people's attachment and connection to others through the quality of their relationships and their social environments affects their health and academic achievement. We now know that the culture, relationships and opportunities in schools contribute to young people's social and academic outcomes and that these are relevant to a range of behaviours, including drug use. Without reducing the role of drug education programs, research is demanding a shift in focus so that curriculum and classroom learning is seen as part of a broader and comprehensive approach to drug prevention and minimising drug-related harm for students and the school community. Which is why we say that you don't need to be a drug expert. Good drug education fits well within a broader health-promoting approach to education. So taking a closer look at these principles, we see that they're based on four key themes of comprehensive and evidence-based practice, positive school climate and relationships, targeted to needs and context, and finally, effective pedagogy. Let's look at a couple of these in more detail and unpack them further. Research shows that we need to embed drug education within a comprehensive whole school approach to promoting health and wellbeing. Tackling drug-related issues in isolation and only at a classroom level is less likely to lead to positive outcomes. Drug education activities are best understood and practised as part of a comprehensive and holistic approach to promoting health and wellbeing for all students. Through a whole school approach, schools can provide a coherent and consistent framework for their policies, programmes and practices. So targeted drug education needs to be relevant to all students. In providing programs, teachers can be as sensitive to the cultural background and experience of students and diverse components of identity, including gender, culture, language, socio-economic status and developmental stage can be considered when providing drug education that is targeted to students' needs. For example, we have higher than national average rates of smoking in Tasmania. And in some local government areas, these rates are higher still. So this is where a focus on education and learning about smoking prevention is going to better meet the needs of these students. Also, if we think about children's development, it's important to introduce concepts that are appropriate to each stage of development. In this case, we wouldn't necessarily introduce a topic addressing ice addiction for year one and two students, but we could look at learning activities that address safe use of medicines or understanding how energy drinks work in the body. Some questions for you to think about when reflecting on these principles could be, how do I see this principle playing out in the schools that I've completed teaching practice in so far? Have you noticed differences in different schools? How do I see these principles fitting within my understanding of teaching and in topics with a health focus? Where are the synergies and the cross-curricular opportunities? For example, if we refer back to the slide about why drug use happens, we can see that protective factors such as healthy self-esteem, psychological safety and positive norms are all aspects that can be strengthened through the delivery of the health and physical education curriculum. And this learning doesn't need to specifically focus on the topic of drugs per se to do this. 
So any learning that supports students to develop emotional intelligence, recognising emotions of anger, frustration, sadness, and how to respond to these emotions in healthy ways is an approach to reducing or preventing potential problematic substance use. For example, dealing with feelings of stress with a cigarette or alcohol compared to learning how to pursue healthier options for dealing with difficult emotions. To understand where this would link to the HBE curriculum, we can begin to look at the being healthy, safe and active substrand. The learning processes of identifying emotions has good linkages across this strand and at different age groups. In fact, any learning that builds skills for children around changes and transitions, help seeking and making healthy and safe choices all work to build protective factors underpinning effective drug education. DEN aims to support school delivery of drug education using established best practice and based on these principles. You can create synergy through engaging with a whole of school approach as a health promoting school, through developing a safe and supportive environment and through recognising risk and protective factors. So overall, what good drug education in primary school can do is to begin to introduce ideas of health, how to make healthy choices, how to examine information critically and how to deal with peer pressure or peer preference. So now we're going to show you some resources as examples of activities that you can use in the classroom. DEN's website has a Pinterest account where we pin resources and information categorised into boards. This image here is showing you an example of the primary school learning board. We encourage you to check out the board and see the various resources and activities that you can download and use. Other boards also have further information around other topics such as addiction. These examples here are posted on the Pinterest board and cover topics such as what are analgesics. This short animated video is developed specifically for primary children and the learning goals include to understand that taking drugs affects the body, to understand that different drugs affect different parts of the body in different ways, and to understand that depending on drugs can affect a person's health and can impact on other aspects of their life. This activity, called What's in a Cigarette, can be used to get a discussion going and increase knowledge of the range of harmful substances in cigarettes. And this activity can be combined with a badge making activity if you have the resources or as a learning session that links with life sciences as this activity is based on the understanding of how brain chemistry works. The discussion explores happy chemicals inside the brain and how you can release them with exercise, good food and having fun with friends. Children can then think about the idea of natural highs and how to choose a range of activities that make us feel good. It reinforces the idea of making positive choices for health. And this example is aimed at lower primary age children and, as mentioned earlier, does not need to be labelled as a drug education lesson. The DICE exercise made by Year 1 and Year 4 students is useful for a range of story-based activities, including investigating emotional responses and identifying and rehearsing strategies when requiring assistance. So these examples hopefully have provided you with some ideas and where you can go to look for information, and we will provide links to these resources at the end. As we mentioned, we are also available to provide additional support, resources and information throughout your career as a teacher. We'd also like to let you know about our new resource, currently at the focus testing stage, called Pirates. This board game is designed for use across all primary age classes and is mapped to the HPE curriculum. We look forward to sharing this interactive and engaging resource with teachers and primary students in the near future, so watch this space. Another resource we wanted to point you to is produced by the Alcohol and Drug Foundation and it's called The Drug Wheel. We recommend this as a resource for detailed and helpful information on drug classes and their effects, as well as specific substances. If, for example, you need information about caffeine to explain to your students about its effects and the levels of caffeine in energy drinks, you can find this information here. Note down the web address and you can check out the site and its info. So now we've come to the end of our presentation. As we've talked about today, 
DEN is a statewide Tasmanian organisation with our core business focused on preventing harm from drugs through leadership and education. Drugs is a big topic and we're not only talking about illegal drugs. Alcohol, tobacco and misuse of prescription medications cause significant harm in our community. Children in primary school are already being exposed to advertising, social norms and attitudes about drugs. The primary school years present an important opportunity to develop knowledge, skills and support healthy behaviours and choices, which can all play a role in preventing harmful substance use as children get older. And we hope you now agree you don't need to be a drug expert to teach drug education. So to finish, we invite you to think back on the question that we posed at the beginning. Have you moved along the continuum in terms of having increased understanding and confidence to teach drug education? And here are our contact, web address and Pinterest details as places to source more information and lesson ideas. We'd also like to know if this session has been useful for you, so I invite you to point your phone camera at the QR code on the screen to open the survey link that can be completed anonymously, or you can email us requesting the survey link. Also feel free to contact us if you want to organise any further training, or to subscribe to our monthly newsletter which will keep you up to date on all events, training and new resources at DEN. Thanks for listening.